And so his father introduced me today. He, he said that I'm the newest deacon, and um, I am Deacon Joe. Um, I was just ordained yesterday. But my wife, Christy, um, and I, Christy is here. We always sit in that same pew. Um, we have been married, um, or we've been part of the parish for 25 years. Um, we have four wonderful children. Peter, who is eight, he is here this morning as well. Peter and some of um, our other St. Margaret Mary parishioners actually just won the district all-star. So they'll be heading to the state tournament. Um, Sarah is here. She's 13. Well, she'll be 13. We celebrate her birthday all month. That'll tell you a little bit about Sarah. And um, my daughter Kate is 16. I'm not allowed to say anything about Kate. Um, and then my daughter Conchetta, who is 18. She just graduated from high school. She already has a job and she is on her way to nursing school. So i um, very proud of them and, and grateful for them. Um, lots of family came in town, including my mom and dad, who I'm so grateful for. They, um, they taught me to love others above yourself from an early age. So, so grateful for them. Very busy in the Pizzarello household. Um, and with like a name like Pizzarello, I always thought that maybe Jesus had a little bit of Italian in him. Just, just a little bit. Um, and when you think about it, a lot of his ministry happened around meals, right? Feeding 5,000 people, that's just a Sunday afternoon for an Italian family. Um, the very first miracle, water into wine at a wedding, well, that's as Italian as it gets in my book. But then we get to today's gospel. Here Jesus comes into town. His family gives him a hard time. He sits down and he starts to teach. And they say, Jesus, your mother is outside. Now, if there was just a little bit of Italian in him, when he said, oh, I don't know, that's not my mother. If you said that to an Italian mother, gospel would have went a whole lot different. I can tell you that. <laughs> but we know Jesus loved Mary. He loved Mary very much. He wasn't denying his mother but he was instituting this. His, all of you and, and us, brothers and sisters in Christ, the church. And what we know is if you have a strong Christian community surrounding you, it helps you live a God-centered life. You know, our scriptures today, they talk about some challenging things, things we don't like to talk about much anymore. In Genesis, it talks about sin. We try to avoid talking about that, but there is a right and a wrong, and there are consequences. Right? God tells Adam and Eve in that story, don't eat, don't eat the fruit. Instead of doing what it is that God wanted for them, they did what they wanted. They ate of the fruit. And that separated themselves from God. That's what sin does. It separates us just a little bit from the Lord. And then when he asked them about it, Adam pointed to Eve, Eve pointed to the serpent, and God held everybody accountable. Instead of trying to bring them closer to God, bring each other closer to God, they led each other to temptation. They led each other to sin. You know, in our second reading, in Paul's second letter to Corinthians, he talks about our time being here on earth as temporary. He uses a tent as a temporary dwelling place. And Paul would know about tents. He was actually a tent maker. But he contrasts that. He contrasts that temporariness of a tent with a permanent home in heaven, a home not built with human hands, but a home that God has for us. He wants that closeness with us. He wants that in heaven. The problem is, is we have that place, that eternal place in heaven, but there's another place that we could go to, another place we don't like to talk about. And if we go to if we go to hell, 
That's a complete separation from God for eternity. But we have a loving God, a forgiving God. In our psalm today, we prayed that. He's merciful. He forgives us. He wants that closeness. He wants that closeness with us in eternity, in heaven. And he wants that closeness with us here on earth. And so how are the people around you helping you to draw closer to Christ? How are they bringing you closer to God and helping you avoid that sin and that temptation? You know, we have a beautiful community here at St. Margaret Mary. A wonderful community with lots of great smaller communities inside of it. I can see men from our men's Bible study. I see them in the pews. I see, I see fellow uh, parishioners as part of our Curcio movement. I see them in the pews, daily mass, lots of communities that you can be part of if you're looking for that community. When you're invited, say yes, say yes. And if you're not, if you don't get that invitation, invite yourself. Go to the parish hall or, or go to the, the parish office and find out what's happening. And come, come to a daily mass, come to an 8 a.m. mass. The people are nice there, I promise. They're really nice. You can come. It's really, it's really wonderful. And if you found that community, if you found that community, then invite somebody else new into that community. There's a lot of us out there. Meet somebody new, bring them in. Better yet, look and see who's not here that used to be and invite them back. Call them, go knock on their door, have them come back. You know, our faith is a community faith. It's a faith that we celebrate together. We're one body in Christ. You know, in just a few minutes, we're gonna, we're gonna profess our faith together. We're gonna do the universal prayer. We're gonna pray that prayer together. And then the gifts, the bread and the wine, they're gonna come down the center aisle. They're gonna come to the altar. But that's more than just bread and wine. That is all of our gifts. Your gifts, my gifts, they're all coming together. When that song comes on, watch them come down the aisle. Watch them come to the altar and send your gifts with them. And then when they come down here and they're consecrated, when they become the body, the blood, the soul, and the divinity of Christ, and we celebrate Eucharist, we don't celebrate that individually. And it can be a beautiful, beautiful experience for just you and Christ, but no, we fill the aisles of this church. We all stand up and we come to his table together. We bring our challenges, we bring our difficulties. We all bring our own crosses to the altar. We bring it together as one body of Christ to the Lord. You know, each morning I get up, I, I bring the kids to school. Now it's summer, so summer camp, well, the older ones I bring to work now. But I also, I go to work, I'm raising my family. And the world can be tough. There's temptation out there. The serpent from the garden is real. Sin is out there. So I do the very best I can to surround myself with a strong Christian community because I know it can help me to live a God-centered life.